Hello everyone! Welcome to another episode of Science Lecture Video Series with Sir Geronimo. Let's get started! Hello! So today we are going to continue learning about chemistry. So last time we talked about the properties of matter, particularly the physical and chemical properties. If you were not able to watch the lecture video about that particular lesson, please go back to our uh, YouTube channel and then look for the properties of matter. It is very important for you to understand the properties of matter before we proceed to classification of matter, our lesson for today. So what are the learning objectives that we need to attain at the end of this lecture video? First, we are going to describe what is meant by pure substances and mixtures. And we are going to distinguish mixtures from pure substances based on a set of properties. Now, let us now proceed to our key question. So please keep in mind to answer this question as we progress in this lecture video. Our key question is, what is the difference between mixture and substances based on a set of properties? So at the end of this lesson video, we are going to answer this question. Now, let me ask you this question first. Why isn't it a good idea to classify or group matter by its phases? What are the different phases of matter again? So we have solid, liquid, gas, plasma, and Bose-Einstein condensates. So those are the major phases of matter that we were able to identify last time. But the question is, why isn't it a good idea to group them according to those phases? Well, the answer is, there is one kind, uh, because there is one kind of substance that can exist in more than one phase, such as water or H2O. Remember, when we... When we freeze water, it will become its solid state, also known as ice. But when we melt that ice, we heat it up, we boil it up, it will become a gaseous state called steam. So therefore, there is no definite state of water. Since it can be a solid state, it can be a liquid state, or it can also be a gaseous state. Therefore, it is not a good idea for scientists to group them according to their phases or according to solid, liquid, or gas. Because matter changes phases rather easily, just like water. Another question is this. Why isn't it, uh, matter classified according to its physical characteristics or properties such as color? So last time we were able to identify the different properties or physical properties of matter such as luster, ductility, malleability, etc. So why isn't it a good idea to classify them according to their physical properties? Well, what can you observe on these three forms of matter? So we have here a pot of gold, sunflower, and the sun. Actually, we cannot classify them according to their physical properties since it is not very useful enough. Scientists wouldn't find it very useful to group gold, sunflowers, and sun together just by looking at their color. It is not a good idea to group them according to color or any form of physical characteristic or properties because the, these uh, materials have their own specific properties that we need to consider. And it's not just the color that can make them group together. No? Now, what does or what do the scientists ask themselves in order for them to classify matter? So these are the questions that they ask. First, can it be separated by physical means? Meaning to say, is this particular material or matter be separated physically by means of just physically separating them, tearing them apart, separating them no, manually, segregating them manually or physically? Or it can be separated? Can it be separated by physical chemical means? Are we going to apply chemical processes in order for them to be separated? Or is the composition uniform? throughout. So those are the three questions that they ask if they wish to classify forms of matter according to their properties. Now, let us now proceed to the classifications of matter. So matter, 
may be classified as a pure substance or substance in some references. So what are substances? Substances or substance has definite and constant composition, meaning to say it has a fixed or similar or same composition all throughout. And of course, another classification of matter is mixture. When we say mixture, it is made up of two or more substances. Meaning to say, when we combine substances, more than two substances, physically, we are actually producing a mixture. Now, within a substance, it can also be classified into two. It can be grouped according to two. It can be an element which is made up of only one type of atom and a compound which is made up of more than one type of atom. In this video, we are, the, we are just going to discuss the difference between substance and mixture. For elements and compounds, this will be tackled on the next lecture video. Okay? So let us now have mixtures first. So I'm sure that you are all familiar with the term mixture, particularly when it is used in science. Because mixtures are two or more substances that are not chemically combined. Meaning to say, these are, uh, this is a group or a classification of matter in which there are more than two substances physically combined. Okay? They are not chemically combined. We did not use any chemical processes to combine them. But we use a physical process in order for them to be combined, for them to be mixed together. And this is what we call mixture. Another characteristic or property of mixture is that mixtures do not have a fixed composition and they do not have constant boiling points or melting points. So let me show you an example for you to understand the different properties of mixture. Let's say we have a cereal bowl made of cereal or cereal loops and milk. So whenever we combine cereal loops or the cereal cell with milk, we are actually uh, producing or combining a mixture, no? We are actually making a mixture out of those two ingredients, the milk and the cereal. Now, we say that mixtures do not have a fixed composition. That is true, no? Because we did not, uh, we do not need a particular amount of cereal just to have a cereal bowl. Let's say, for example, even if we put two tablespoons of cereal in our bowl and put how many mls of milk ilan man yan ang ilagay mo na milk dyan sa bowl mo when we mix them together it is still a cereal bowl so therefore there is no fixed composition damihan mo man yung cereal na lagay mo damihan mo man yung gatas ang kalalabasan pa rin yan is still a mixture it is still a cereal bowl no? And we did not combine them chemically. We did not apply any chemical processes. We just mix them manually. No, pinagsama lang natin sila physically. And they do not have constant boiling point or melting points. Even though they are physically combined, the properties of each component is is different from the is different from the property of another component. Ibig sabihin, the boiling point and melting point of milk is different from the boiling point and melting point of the cereal even though they are combined physically. And that is what mixture is all about. Another example is this, pizza. Okay, so we have here, uh, we have here a pizza as an example. So therefore, it is made up of different toppings and a bread and a sauce, no? So that is an example of a mixture. Why is it an example of a mixture? Because it is made up of more than two substances. It is made of two or more substances that are not chemically combined. We just place there, no, physically. Nilagay lang natin sila as toppings, no, physically. We did not apply any chemical processes. And it does not have a fixed composition. A pizza without pepperoni instead ham is still a pizza. Meaning to say... It does not have a mix, a fixed composition for it to be called as pizza. That is a mixture, no? Tanggalan man natin yan ng isang pirasong pepperoni, it is still a pizza. 
tanggalan man natin ng cheese ang ipalit natin ibang kind of cheese let's say for example wag nating ilagay ay uh, wag nating ilagay ay mozzarella ilagay natin uh, cheddar cheese it's still a pizza therefore it does not have a fixed composition another property of pizza being like uh, being called as a mixture is or being identified as a mixture is mix uh, pizza do not have a boiling point or melting points that is said to be constant meaning to say the melting point and boiling point of each uh, toppings is different from the other components or dif uh, are different from other toppings no so the melting point and Boiling point of pizza uh, of cheese is different from the boiling point or melting point of pepperoni or of the bread, di ba? In a particular pizza, ang nauunag bag melt ay cheese, di ba? So therefore, it it has a different property from its entire composition. Therefore, whenever we combine two or more substances physically, each property of that particular component is different from the other, and that is what we call mixtures. Some examples of mixtures are the following. So we have here mixed nuts or mixed sweets, no? Kahit tanggalan natin yan ng isang component, it's still a mixture, no? And we uh, we combine them physically, di ba? And we can also separate them physically. Another example is this, M&M. So kahit tanggalan natin yan ng yellow na color na M&M, it's still M&M. Mixture of chocolates. Tea, di ba? Kahit maglagay tayo ng tatlong kutsarang tsaa at kalahating basong mainit na tubig, it is still a tea. Bawasan man natin ng isang kutsara yung tea, it is still a tea. Diba? It's still a mixture of tea powder and water. We combine them physically. It does not have a fixed composition and they do not have a constant boiling point. Oil and water, even though we cannot combine them naman talaga, we cannot join them together, no? we cannot mix them together, but still we can observe that oil has a different composition with water, that oil has a different boiling point and melting point with water as compared to water. Therefore, even though they are mixed together, they are having different composition, they are having different properties. Because they are just combined physically. Another example is lemon juice. Kahit ilagay natin dyan powder, no? It is still a lemon juice. Gano man karaming lemon powder ang ilagay mo, it is still an, a, a, a lemon juice. Kontihan man natin yung water, so that babaguhin natin yung composition niya, yung kanyang uh, constitution, it's still a lemon juice. And of course, milk. Now, another property of mixture is that it can be separated by physical means to produce pure substances. What do we mean by that? We can combine them physically and we can also separate them physically. And that is what mixture is all about. No? Some examples of physical separations are the following. Evaporation, filtration, distillation. So let me show you an example of physical separation by means of mixtures. So, let's say for example, this beaker contains coffee. So, coffee is a mixture of coffee grounds and and water, no? Hot water. So, it's a mixture of two uh, substances. Or three substances if we add sugar, no? Now, whenever we apply filtration as our mode of physical separation, what will happen is it will pass through the filter paper and the filtrate will be water, while the residue will be the coffee grounds. So therefore, a mixture of coffee grounds and water can be separated physically through filtration process. Meaning to say, we can actually separate them physically without the use of chemical processes. And in that case, we are actually capable of producing pure substances. We combine two or more pure substances together to form a mixture, we can also separate them into uh, pure substances physically. And that is what we call mixtures. Another example of uh, separating mixtures is seawater or salt water. So whenever we get sample from an ocean, so we get a, a mixture of salt and water, when we apply 
physical separation technique called evaporation by heating the, the sample, what will happen is that the water will evaporate, so it will become a steam. What will be left out will be the salt. So, water and salt are both pure substances. We combine them physically, but we can also separate them physically. And that is what we call mixtures. Mixtures can be combined and separated physically. That is the main idea about mixtures. It can be separated physically. It can be combined physically. Now, Another classification of matter that we are going to talk about is pure substances or are pure substances. When we say pure substances, pure substances has a definite and same composition. So unlike mixture which do not have a fixed composition, pure substances is a total opposite because it is composed of similar or constant composition. It has a definite and same composition. And unlike uh, mixtures, pure substances cannot be separated by physical means. Meaning to say, we cannot combine them physically and we cannot separate them physically also. In mixtures, we can combine them, we can combine pure substances physically to form a mixture and we can also separate a mixture into pure substances physically. But in pure substances, we cannot do both. We cannot separate them physically and we cannot combine them physically to produce another pure substances. If we combine pure substances, two or more pure substances physically, we will just produce a mixture and not a pure substance. So what do we need to do in order for a pure substance when combined Together, it will produce another pure substance. We are going to conduct chemical process. So, unlike uh, mixtures, pure substances, when we separate them, when we combine them, we use chemical processes and not physical processes. An illustration about the difference between the two is this. So, when we combine pure substances with another pure substance, we can actually form a mixture and not a pure substance, not a combination of pure substance we, because we just applied physical process. And this mixture of two or more pure substance can also be separated physically and it can, be, it, can, it can become pure substances or individual pure substances. But in pure substances, we cannot separate pure substances into two different pure substances physically, we need to conduct chemical processes in order for them to be separated. So therefore, pure substance cannot be separated by physical means. The only classification of matter that can be separated by physical means is what we call mixture, but not pure substances. So what are some examples of pure substances? One example of pure substances is table salt, which is having a, a chemical name of sodium chloride, NaCl. So this is the element uh, symbol of sodium and this is the element symbol of chlorine, Cl. Na for sodium, Cl for chlorine. So we will talk about elements and compounds in the next video series. So this is an example of pure substance. It is composed of or it has a definite composition, tanggalin mo si sodium sa NaCl, hindi na siya salt. Tanggalin mo si chlorine sa NaCl, hindi na siya salt. Okay? So, yun yung kanyang uh, property. It has a definite and complete and same composition. Another example of pure substance is water. Water is composed of two pure substances. Hydrogen as an element, hydrogen atom, and oxygen atoms. If we separate them uh, or if we separate them by means of filtration, we cannot separate hydrogen from oxygen. Okay? What do we need to do is we apply chemical processes in order for the two to be separated. In order for us to separate hydrogen to water. Later on, I will show you an example. Another example of pure substances are table sugar or sucrose. 
So it is made up of 12 atoms or 12, mon uh, 12 atoms of carbon, uh, H22O11. Another example is aluminum foil. So it is made up of element aluminum, a pure substance. And the rest of the elements found in the periodic table. So all of them are examples of pure substances. Okay? Now, pure substances can only be combined and separated by physical means. Meaning to say, we can combine them to form a pure substance and we can only separate them to, to, into two different pure substances by chemical means or by using chemical processes. An example is this. If we want to separate the hydrogen atoms from oxygen atoms in water, we need to apply electricity to separate them. So whenever we apply electricity or electrical current to water, H2O, we can actually separate hydrogen from oxygen. Oxygen as gas and hydrogen as gas also. And if we combine them chemically, we can also form water. But if we just combine them physically, it will not become water because it is being combined only physically. But if we combine them chemically, we will be able to form water. If we, if we separate them chemically, we will be able to have oxygen and hydrogen separately. But if we will only uh, separate them physically, it will still water. No? Kahit mag-separate tayo ng water, physically, water pa rin ang kakalabasan. Unless we apply chemical process, we can actually separate the pure substances within that particular substance. Okay? So, those are the difference between pure substances and mixtures. Again, mixtures does not have fixed composition, while pure substances has fixed composition. Another example is that mixtures does not have constant properties, meaning to say the property of each component is different from the rest, while pure substances, when combined together, will have a new property that is similar for that particular pure substance. And the most important idea or property that we need to identify in differentiating the two is that mixtures can be separated can be combined physically but not chemically while pure substances can be combined and can be separated by chemical means only. So mixtures, physical means only. Okay, physical processes. Pure substances, chemical processes. So that is our lesson for today. I hope that you learned something about our lesson for today and Thank you very much for listening. See you on the next lesson.